So, okay, what was it? Horse? Why I jumped a horse? I don't know. You jumped a horse? Horse meat, yeah. But in Europe in 2013, it was found it was a mixture of beef and horse meat. Was it really? Yeah! Ah! <laughs> it's like a Bob's Burgers yeah, episode. There's... I think that's why I jumped it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hardly Working, the show about life, love, and labor, hosted by the couple that works, plays, and stays together. I'm SP. And I'm Kelly. And it's been a crazy weekend. And I'm boy, sorry. am I tired. Are you Kelly, the Kelly? Are you what the you Kelly mean? as seen in People magazine? What do you mean? Are you the Kelly as featured in Brides magazine? What do you mean? Oh, it's been a busy week it's for Bumble Booth. Bumble you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah. As much as we can talk about it, which yeah. is more and more as more articles come out. That's true. Tell me about it. What did we do this week? We had a couple Bumble Booth photo booth activations. So for those at home who don't know, I mean, it is the Hardly Working podcast um, where we work really hard, but we hardly work. Uh, I own a photo booth business and we travel the world doing that together. And this weekend, we can finally talk about it. We were up in Carmel, Monterey area. Um, and I did Derek and Haley Huff's wedding and may or may not have been mentioned in Brides magazine. It was a lot of fun. We were up there for uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, came back Sunday, two different photo activations. The first one at the welcome party on Thursday was lenticular, which is very exciting. Our photos in motion. Photos in motion. Yes. The uh, scientific term is lenticular, I believe. Yeah. You look but it up no one in an encyclopedia. And I'm sure more stuff will come out on that later that evening. Oh yeah. We'll be seeing more of that. And then on Saturday, the day of the actual wedding, we had a glam booth mm -hmm. as black well, and white glam. black and white, black and white glam, as well as uh, gifts, mm -hmm. which was so fun. So fun. Honestly, it was a great experience. We work with Simply Troy. Love our Simply Troy team. Kate, Andrew, Eric, Peter. I was like, I can't forget Peter. <laughs> Uh, and of course, Troy, we love y'all yes. so much. Thanks for, he always brings us into the greatest things. We it's absolutely love him. And of course, like Kelly said, thank you, Troy, for always bringing us in. Let us be a part of what you're doing. We love, love, love working with you, for you, and being a friender with you. And you put on an incredible event. Oh my gosh, yeah. Three days in a row. It was gorgeous. If you haven't seen Brides of People magazine, you should go and check it out just to see the pictures. It's beautiful. It is pretty incredible. It was a lot of fun. Lots of cool people there. You'll see it. Um, if you'd go check out those posts, it was mm -hmm. really fun getting to hang with people, getting to capture those moments and photos. And I'm sure we'll be putting up our photos as soon as we are allowed to do that. Yeah. But it was amazing. The couple's so sweet. Haley's my new favorite person. I just want to be your best friend. She's so kind <laughs> and so sweet and so loving to everybody. It's, it's was fun to watch, uh, and to be a part of that. So it was a it really was fun evening. Times. Um, so yeah, fun weekend. Uh, of course, we road tripped up there, which I think is hysterical because the one comment I get all the time, or I feel like we get all the time on our podcast, is yeah. people go, how are you guys able to <laughs> talk to each other for so long? Well, let me just tell you that it was a four, about a four to five hour drive each way. Um, and we didn't listen to any podcasts or put on any music. In fact, the only time we put on music was just one song, and it was because SP got a song stuck in his head. Can you remember what it was? It's by Stacey Arico. Oh, you remember who it's by? Yeah, yeah, and I can't remember the song, but I know it was by Stacey Rico. Yeah, that was the only time. Yeah, the rest of the five hours, it. I just talked at Kelly. No, we talked to each other, but just more proof. We like to work together. We like to hang together. We like to do life together. That's the work, play, and stay, baby. Yeah, I will say this, though. Okay. It was a very fun drive. I've never been to Carmel. Right. Like before, um, and never really driven that far. The farthest I've driven is like, Fresno, Visalia. You never driven up to San Fran or anything? No. Hmm. I fly to San Fran because it makes oh, more sense. Because oh, I'm in People Magazine. No. I fly. Does it make more sense to fly? It does, yeah. We just didn't because we had so much gear that we were taking with us. But I will say uh, <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the drive yeah. was somewhere in farm country. I had no idea where we were. Um, all of a sudden, there started to be these big wooden cutouts. That was of so people. weird. And I was like, like from, from far away, you're like, are those people in the field? Which I'm sure is the point of it. Right. But it was so funny because the farther we, the, the more we kept driving, um, the more, not necessarily sexual, but the more like, what's the word for it? It was kind of like whatever the word for euphemism would be, but in a photo. Yeah. It was they, suggestive. And the more suggestive they got, especially when you got to the lettuce. 
and where the person decided to hold the lettuce. The two heads this, of lettuce. The two heads of lettuce um, in this big cutout, wood cutout of this farmer. It was the funniest thing, but it was funny to watch because we would be like, what's the next thing going to be? What's the next thing going to be? It was great. It was That very, one was by odd. far my favorite, though. I laughed out loud. Yeah, that one was weird because it was like a dead end. It became like a T-bone intersection. Yes, you so, had to hit him. Yeah, you had to or see, see him. Yeah. Yep. And he could have been like, look at these. Even but like, he, look at these, but he was holding them like, right, right in the crotchal region, <laughs> which was awesome. The other <laughs> so thing that we funny. saw, well, I saw like 50 times, and then you finally saw oh, yeah. was these overpasses that had hornet's nests or wasp nests or something like that all the way across, oh, yeah, which was crazy. scary. Have you seen these videos on TikTok where people are using gasoline in a cup I have. to take care of hornets and, it's and wasps? it's crazy. It's nuts. I just need you to know, well, you know this. My dad's very allergic to wasps, like very allergic. And what I know about wasps is they're not like bees. They can bite you multiple times and they don't die. Mm -mm. Not like a bee that can sting you and is done. Um, but he's very allergic. And I always think about these people that are bare handed, like they don't have gloves on. They just take the cup and they do it. And I'm like, I don't understand why or how you would get that close. You kill them all. I see that. But what if one gets out before you get it? the gasoline there? I've seen some videos like that. It's nuts though. All these people are taking these like half full cups of gasoline yeah. and just like shoving it up to the top. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens is the oxygen basically goes away and all of the wasps or hornets or whatever flood out because they can't breathe and they go directly into the gas and immediately die. Yeah. I don't know if the insect and uh, pet and animal people are going to love this, but it is a very kind way to end that problem. It's and it's pretty fun. Way. Very effective. So um, give it a shot, I guess. Or don't. Don't get mad or at me. Or call SP. Maybe he'll do it for you. I'm don't sure. get mad at me like all the frog people did last oh week gosh. this was nuts so last that week so funny. we're we're talking about the um people who are hopping mad about all the the rabbits the or rabbits. something mm -hmm. and we got into that frog discussion yeah, i was just remembering that that was a video yeah just a quick recap this dude put like two or three million frog eggs in a pond in his neighborhood and so we put that up on youtube in fact, we put it up, the clip up everywhere. Yeah. It got some traction on TikTok, nothing on Instagram, but then YouTube, man. It got over 10,000 views in the course of just a few days, and people were calling it eco-terrorism. I think it is actually eco-terrorism. I don't know, because at some point, like people who are like, these people have clearly never been to a lake before where there's always millions of frog eggs. It's not a big deal. But it became a big deal on our YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah but it does. We talked about it last week. I said, I think it really does change an ecosystem. And I could see how that'd be eco-terrorism, because you introduce these frogs into a place that maybe they weren't naturally there. And this place wasn't near a lake in the middle of somewhere somewhere a neighborhood a yeah. neighborhood yeah and so it really can change everything look don't commit but his, his ego crimes yeah his account doesn't exist anymore so i'm assuming that he probably got in trouble for it hey i never do follow-ups but this is a follow-up yeah his account's gone yeah i think even the fbi no that was an ancient aliens thing i was watching no, <laughs> i don't no, think I, the fbi came to this no i think house. some people commented and said that that happened but i don't actually think we looked into it here's what i'm gonna say though is People do what they do. I didn't do this. And some people came to my defense because people were like, oh, this guy thinks it's hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> it's a hilarious <laughs> thing to do. And I stand by that. Don't commit ego crime. But that is a really funny. That's the type of thing you like say at two in the morning in a dorm room and you never do it. But it's hilarious to talk about. So I stand firm on okay, my conviction on frog eggs. Stand right in it. Speaking of uh, wasps, hornets, and the like, our kid had her first day of school, and she got a bee sting. Oh, I was like, I'm not quite sure how this connects. I get it now. It's a little bit of both. Get to talk about the bee sting, which is, that's really it. It was fine. But also, last week we talked about, it was Brooklyn's first week first of school. school. Yeah. And it we talked, even in the last episode where we split it up, the first chunk of that episode is all about the new class and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully you made it through that. Hopefully that was <laughs> engaging and not boring. And uh, she had her first day of school. She's had she her first did. week at this yeah. point. And she's had a great time. Yeah, she did get stung on the first day. It was an early release day, too, out early. And, she, of course, she would get stung, like, at lunch an hour before class was out. But she seemed to be doing good. She was like, I don't want to go home. She was cool. Look, Didn't cool. go home. It was all First good. bee sting, like, actual bee sting. So I think she's been stung by a bumble. Uh, or a yellow jacket. Yellow jacket. Maybe, I think I Whitney was saying. Different. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. So that's she's all good. pretty cool. That's the follow-up on B. She's and doing then great. we do have one more thing. To, to mention before we get into the, the bulk of the show, speaking of Brooklyn, we did just find out that we're back in soccer, which wasn't Ooh. the most awesome thing to find out, mostly because we found out just a few days before it started, and this year is going to be different than others. It is two practices a week, 
Real and time. a game on the weekend. So it's three days of soccer responsibilities every single week. The practices are Monday and Friday night. This kid's eight. Monday and Friday night. So literally every Friday and Saturday, which are frankly the days that we work the most in our industry, yeah. there is soccer practice every Friday night and soccer games every Saturday. So it's going to be a big adjustment for these next four months. Yeah. I wasn't a sports person. That's what they call them. Sports person. I wasn't an athlete. Yeah. Yeah, you, I, you know, I still, you still laugh at me because I call practice rehearsal. They yeah, rehearsal. That is bad. <laughs> I'm like, it's not rehearsal, <laughs> it's practice. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be learning this season uh, what it is to be a soccer mom. Yeah, uh, Kelly even got the opportunity or was asked, would you like to be the team parent, which you'd be great at. Yeah, but I, I don't have the time. Don't have the time <laughs> You're too busy being we, in People Magazine. We're already... <laughs> We're already <laughs> missing out on a couple of games anyway because we'll literally be in Florida. So uh, that's true. Yeah, we're already pretty we're booked. Around. So, but I'm excited. See. Brooklyn does love soccer for now. I'm curious to see how she'll like it at the end of this year because she hasn't had to go to practices during the week this much or this late. Yeah. Um, and four months is a long time. It's a long time. And thankfully, we're supposed to have practice today, but it got canceled because it's 108 today. Oh, my gosh. 108. So I miss Carmel. It was like a beautiful 74 degrees with an ocean breeze. And then we come back to the valley and it's in the hundreds. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Speaking of Carmel or Carmel. Carmel. I call it. Carmel. When we were up there, we got to see Craig, too. Oh, yeah. Not just a friend of ours, but a friend of the show. And Craig, I know you're listening to this. So I want to say, first of all, I hope you're driving somewhere nice. I hope the traffic's wonderful. Thanks for putting us in your podcast rotation. We love you. We love your fam bam. And we're grateful that you're listening yeah. and excited about the podcast. Yep. And we're sending all the good vibes this week to you guys. Yep. To y'all. All of them to you. So a couple things. We got a couple follow-ups and emails from last week. And then we've got some new segments I'm excited about. Oh, okay. So let's jump into emails. Of course, you know you can email us at hardlyworkingfans at gmail or hit us up on Instagram. Or if you know us personally, just shoot us a text. Yep. Um, that's for stories, unpopular opinions, emails, whatever you want. This was a follow-up from, I guess now it would be almost two weeks ago when we had an unpopular opinion that John sent in about the bed sheets. Oh my gosh. He sent in a video, but I'll <laughs> I'll give you the gist of it. He says, SP and Kelly love the shout out and the entire discussion on the bed sheet, bed sheet top situation. I can read. Sure, I can read. I'd like to follow up, though, so I can further beat this dead horse because I'm really good at that. Mm -hmm. First, there's no tag because if you made the bed appropriately in the first place, the tag would be tucked underneath said bed in the first place. Wait, pause right there. What I need him to know, yes. John, if you're listening... What you don't know about me and how I have transformed SP is that I like to sleep in a cocoon. I've always liked to sleep in a cocoon. My dad used to tuck me in like that. And so, yes, I understand that the tag gets tucked in under the bed. But at nighttime, when I go to sleep, you know, it gets tucked in under my feet. The sheet. The top sheet. The top sheet. It's true. I just want to be wrapped. I want my feet to be wrapped. I want to be like a little burrito all tucked in. <laughs> And SP likes that now, too. I know. She converted me. But... He used to make fun of me. After reading or watching John's video... Oh, my gosh. He converted me back. Okay. So here's what else he says. He says... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, next, with the top sheet pattern down the way that he likes it, opposite of what we said we'd do, we would do, when you open the bed, you're now in between the taco sheets of softness, which sounds amazing. If you put the sheet pattern up, it's not as soft. There's definitely a difference. Love you guys. Smooches. Bye. Smooches. So I'm now on your side again, John. You convinced no. me. All right. We don't have anything. We don't, our sheets are plain. <laughs> they're pink. They're gray. And that's it. They're Brooklinen. Not a sponsor, but we do love check Brooklyn. them out. Use the code hardly working for 10% off. Just I think what, what I'll have to do is... I'll have to spend a few nights sleeping with John and then a few nights back home sleeping with you. See which one you like better? Compare notes, yeah. I don't think he's going to snuggle you as well as I do. Are you kidding? Actually, he probably would snuggle you better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You be the little spoon. I like being the little spoon. <laughs> All right. Thanks for sending that in. Hardlyworkingfans at gmail.com if you have anything else you want to say. I've got some new things I want to introduce. Okay. Are you ready for it? Yep. Okay. I hope. This first one is a new segment. That I'm calling, did you fall for it? You want to do it with me? One, two, three. Did, did you fall for it? it? Man, I, we're good. Do you nailed it. Good, good, good. No rehearsal. No rehearsal. 
no soccer no practice. practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we are one in the same, you and I. <laughs> All right. So I was watching this video. I want to give a shout out. Uh, I was scrolling through TikTok and this account at H H H L I seven. Don't know if you pronounce that differently, so I spelled it out. Wanted to give them a shout out because uh, I pulled a lot from there. This is a list of advertisements from companies that turned out to be lies. So I want to know if you fell for any of these lies. Okay. And if you're listening at home, let are us know. Are all of these lies? All of these are okay, lies. So yeah, like it's trying, not a game okay, like true game. or false. Okay, okay. Yeah, I've got one of those later. All right, here's the first one. Skechers Shoes. Okay. Which I know is a big deal in your family. I know, my parents, my brother love it. For some reason, I've never met fans of Skechers. They're like comfy. Die hard fans until I met your family. They're comfortable. Okay, I'm, uh, I haven't probably had never even tried them like on. They're, they're comfortable. Yeah. Okay. So I like Crocs. I do love Crocs. It's my guilty pleasure. Skechers shoes claimed that they're step ups. Do you remember those? I do remember. My, I think my mom had a pair. Shout out to Melody. Burned more calories than any other shoe. No joke. I'm telling you that I am. She'll she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm 99 percent sure that my mom got those shoes because of that advertisement. That really? I'm guessing is wrong. Well, she should have gotten paid because that claim landed Skechers in a 40 million dollar settlement for unfounded claims. No way. 40 million. Y'all. I remember those. They were like rounded. Yes. So you like would like step. Uh huh. On them. Yeah. I'm like if she didn't buy them she definitely went to try them on and maybe i was the one who was like you don't need those i don't know but like i distinctly remember it was at the sketcher store where we went and saw barbie like where that movie theater yeah. is you know what i'm talking about out of no burbank? burbank yeah, yeah. so let, like there's a sketcher store right down the way from that and that's literally where we went and looked at them let me tell it's you how much thing. kelly's family loves sketchers we were in portugal oh yeah yeah yeah. and we're walking through the beautiful city <laughs> we're having some sangria as we walk and talk and then we stop in some stores, one of which was Skechers. And I'm pretty sure your mom ended up buying a pair of Skechers in Portugal. She did. She did buy a pair of Skechers. They were pretty cool, though. I'm not going to lie. They we'll were, see if we can get a photo for the uh, clips. I believe at that time, uh, someone was trying to sell us drugs. Drugs. Yeah. Because we didn't <laughs> yeah. go in the Skechers store. We wa- walked and we wanted to see more of Portugal. Yeah. We already had our step ups on. So we we're like, we're fine. We don't need, <laughs> we don't need any. Skechers pay us. Just That's kidding. That's right. Yeah. Not a sponsor. Okay. So. You didn't fall for it, but your mom did. Yeah, well, I don't I actually Possibly. don't know if she bought them, but yeah. We'll clarify. But I do remember that was a big deal. So this one's pretty quick. Okay. Next one is Naked Juice yeah. claimed that it was all natural. Yes, we drank Naked Juice in our house too. It was like part of the healthy thing you drink. And in my mind, I was like, this is too sweet. Yep. <laughs> There's too much sugar in this for this to be good. <laughs> Sugar's natural. It's natural, but it's not. So what do they put in it that makes it not all natural? I don't know. Didn't look it up. I did mention that that would be a quick one, but thank you for asking more questions. I was just curious. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, high fructose corn syrup as an unfounded claim on my part, but yeah. that would be my guess. Preservatives of sorts. Cause yeah, probably cause, preservatives. Cause stuff that, yeah, fruits and vegetables normally turn a different color after yeah. it's been opened up and like air has gotten to it. Yes. Let me give you another one. Okay. I want you to see if you can guess what this claim was. Okay. Listerine made a claim. Can you guess what it was? Kills 99.9% of germs. Correct. But that's not the claim that we had a problem with. Uh-oh. So apparently our mouths that's are still That's good. Safe. We're yes. still good. We're still good. <laughs> okay. So uh, it says that Listerine mouthwash claimed it was three times more effective than brushing and flossing and could actually, actually. What was, what was that word? Sorry, I was busy <laughs> flossing as I said actually. it. Actually. It could actually replace flossing in your routine. Yeah, that's not. I never. No. Not My at best all. friend's a dental hygienist. Yes. We flossing is important. Flossing and water picking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either one, but yes. I kind of like doing both. Same. I don't know. I never feel like the water pick gets everything. Maybe you're just not getting in there enough. Oh, I get in there. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Make, I make my mouth bleed. <laughs> not That's probably really. not good. No, probably not. No. I should floss more. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can floss and water pick, but you should be able to do one or the other. I like Listerine as a part of the uh, the routine. Yeah, but yeah. It doesn't replace flossing. No, Are no, you no. Are kidding no. me? I never fell for that. All right. This next one. Suckers. Didn't fall for it. I'm sure you didn't fall for this one. You'll see why. Red Lobster. Oh, yeah. Not going to happen for no. you. <laughs> this is the claim. <laughs> it claimed that its lobster bisque was lobster bisque. What is it? It is not. What is it? It's actually made from langostino. Which is? A cousin not of the lobster, but of the hermit crab. So I'm sorry. 
the yeah. pet that people have in their house. I'm sorry. That the what? shells get painted, hermit crabs. You you think people have hermit crabs as pets in their house and they paint the shells while the crabs are living in it? That's a Maybe thing. Maybe they paint the hermit hermit crabs later. But it, the hermit crab people have hermit crabs in their house in like little tanks. Yeah. Okay. That's so real? like like a fish would be a pet. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. The, okay. Yeah. I thought you meant like it just, like like, you know, just crawls on the windowsill. No, 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 no. Like, like a lizard. You don't have a lizard out. You have a lizard in a tank. You ever had a pet lizard? No. Ever had a pet hermit crab? Uh, no, I didn't no. want one though. Yeah, but I had making friends. Stuff up. I had friends that had hermit crabs. That is not true. And Mandy and Travis Cooper had a hermit crab. No, they had a pet lizard. A bearded dragon. Which is a lizard. Whose name was one, two, three? Lizzie. Steve. I don't remember. Lizzie. It was Lizzie. I'm pretty sure. Lizzie the lizard. Yeah, I'm pretty All sure. Right. I'm pretty sure Judah or like Jackson named it. Mandy, if you're listening to this, which she does, we love you. We love you. But also and if I, tell if us. I said the wrong name of your, your, well, it's not even your bearded dragon anymore because they gave the bearded dragon away oh. when they moved to Tennessee. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. Oh, wasn't that, you know, big of a part of the family that Mandy I guess. Mandy loves lizards though. I know. That's such she a weird really thing did. about you, Mandy. <laughs> I love I'm that. I'm just she assuming does. that she's listening because I know she listens. Yeah, she does. So now I'm talking to her. Hey. Yeah. Tell Travis we say hey. Yeah. <laughs> that's all though. Okay. Um, uh, Two more for you real quick. Okay. 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 This next one is from. Burger. I'm sorry. I'm, I just can't even get past the fact it wasn't lobster bisque. <laughs> oh yeah, it was a hermit crab, which I guess is technically That's crab. Like having cat soup <laughs> for some people. What? That have hermit crabs. As pets. Wait, if that's like having cat soup, what's the <laughs> soup that it's replacing? You're like, this isn't chicken noodle. I'm just saying they took a like a like an animal that is actually a pet for some people, and they were like, we're it's just not a pet. pet. It is. Some people have hermit crabs. <laughs> if you made a list. Of the top 20 pets, hermit crab would not be on the list. I think it would be. This is not a thing. Oh, my gosh. Look it up so bad because I know that people have hermit crabs. It's, it's a thing. It's not a thing. Okay. And I was going to say next week but we'll dis- bring in a hermit crab, but we won't. No, just disgusting. Red lobster. Red hermit <laughs> crab. Lying. We should call yeah. him red, red hermit, hermit crab. crab. That's your new name. That's right. Red Langostino. Hermit crab. Um, since we don't typically follow up on stuff because I just don't have the memory for that. I will. I'm going to say it now because I remembered. While we won't be bringing in a hermit crab, when we hit our 10th episode as the season one finale, we talked about it earlier, we are going to bring in that Eggo Brunch in a Jar that oh, we yeah. talked about a couple episodes ago. I told you ago. I wanted to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm if also going to make it, him try it. Yes. If, if you missed it, that was the boozy, brunchy Lego cocktail that's supposed to take like taste like butter, eggos, bacon, all sorts of disgusting stuff that for some reason Kelly really wants to try. Yeah, we're, we're both going to try it. Yes, we are both going to try it on camera. It may not make it onto YouTube because you're not supposed to drink on YouTube. We'll see. But we'll just pretend that it's non-alcoholic. I don't know how it works. But we're going to drink a lot of it, and it's going to be disgusting, and I'm not looking forward I'm to not, it. I'm not committing to drinking a lot of it. Kelly told I'm me off camera to she's going to have it. four pints. That's not what I said. All right, I want to hear the rest of these okay. things. So the last few, uh, the I'm next one. Try it. I am going to try it, just not that many. Okay, sorry. Burger King. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm trying to think about what it could be, but I don't know. You're not going to guess this one. Okay. Burger King claimed that its Whopper was an all-beef patty. It was not an all beef patty. At least, let me give you some more context. At least, not in Europe in 2013. Oh, okay. I wasn't in Europe in 2013. I don't actually ever think I've had a Whopper. I don't think I have either. So, okay. What was it? Horse? Why I jumped a horse? I don't know. You jumped a horse? Horse meat, yeah. But in Europe in 2013, it was found it was a mixture of beef and horse meat. Was it really? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's like a Bob's Burgers yeah, episode. I think that's why I jumped there. It was like horse meat. That's yeah. so weird. So I don't know if they took it from, hor- from horse meat, from Bob's Burgers. They're like, this is a good idea. Or if uh, vice versa. I think happened. it's vice versa. Uh, to all you people in the UK in 2013 who ate a Whopper, how dare you eat a horse? Yeah, how was and it? And also, I'm so sorry. What? I mean, how dare you? How you, dare you? Okay, but when it comes to other types of meat, you've had kangaroo. I have had kangaroo. Because apparently it's a pest and not. Not a, a pet. pet. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I heard in Australia. I heard kangaroos are actually more common pets than hermit crabs. No I way. I just read it kangaroos right now. Kangaroos are mean. They are mean. Have you seen a kangaroo like fight a person? Uh, no, I haven't. It's hilarious. I've also never been to Australia like you have. Yeah, lots of spiders. 
Yeah, that's why I will never go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you would not be a fan. Mm, nope. And last one. Okay, I'm comes ready. Comes from a fast food restaurant that's actually the number one most available. Subway it or has, Starbucks? That's it. Yep. Which one? It has the most locations. It's Subway. Subway. Okay. So this could have been easy. Like they claim that you can lose weight and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, like Jared. Yeah. And yeah. Scandal and we, noted. There's a. You can watch that on Netflix. Yeah. Don't though. Jeez. Unless you want oh, oh. Subway and the the lie was honestly just Subway, and I'll tell you why. Their tuna salad. Okay. Like if you get a tuna salad sandwich, yeah. contains no detectable DNA sequence of tuna. Number one. <laughs> Two, its bread is classified more as a cupcake than bread. I don't know what that means. I assume that the was, ingredients are closer to cupcake ingredients like, in what? ratios than bread. Okay. And its chicken is part horse. I'm just kidding. No, I don't want that. I don't I was on like, the wait, internet. What? No. <laughs> Their chicken is 50% soy fillers. So if you have a chicken breast, if you cut sense. it in half, half would be chicken, half would be soy fillers. Yeah, that That's makes not sense. how chemical engineering works, but half of it is soy yeah, fillers. Yeah. That makes sense. It doesn't, though. It looks like chicken. Yeah, I've had it, though. It doesn't always taste like chicken. Have it you taste bad. But. Have you seen how McNuggets are made? No, don't tell me. They're delicious. I, I don't want to know. But I, they're I just, like... I, live, I don't want to know. Okay. I well, love you so much. I and love I love too. all the facts you have. Don't ruin this for me. It's definitely not pink, gloopy, globby grossness that they put into a mold and then deep fry. If that's what you were thinking, it's not <laughs> that. Those are all of the did you fall for it. This has been did you, you fall, fall for it? it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> We've all fallen and for so Subway. And so did my mom. That's right. We are using our Skechers Wait, step ups to walk to Subway. how much money did they Subway. have to give out to people? A uh, who? The Skechers. They had to give out $40 million. To how many people do you know? 40 million. It's not a million dollars per person. No, it'd be one dollar per person. Oh, 40 million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Woo. Math, math, math. math it's math, been math. a long weekend. One dollar. Yeah, I'm really tired. That's number one, Mike hit. Today. Yep. All righty. Um, I've got some more stuff to get to, but do you want to get to your stuff? Uh, you want sure. me to keep going? Yeah, keep going. Okay, so I have another <laughs> new segment. Oh, another new segment. Yep. Okay. Because I was jealous. That I had a new segment last week? I was, well, so for people at home or listening or watching, you don't know this, but I don't tell Kelly anything that's happening. No, I know nothing. And she doesn't tell me anything she's bringing into this. No. So everything that happens, it's the first time that the other person is hearing any of it. Yeah. So I don't know what segment she has. She doesn't know what I'm doing. So I was jealous of all your fun facts. <laughs> so I brought in some fun facts of my own. I have four questions, four fun facts mm -hmm. that you have to guess the answer to. Okay. Here's the first one. This mm -hmm. is fun facts with SP. Wink. First. <laughs> <laughs> Number okay. one. Uh -huh. The British Navy uses songs by which artist to scare off pirates? ABBA. I have three answers, but if you want to go with ABBA, okay, we can no, do that. Going. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I was, I'm sorry, is okay. that why because of waterloo you I thought know. that scares off pirates i don't know but they they won that in uh eurovision eurovision that's how abba became popular Currently with that Netflix. song yeah pretty okay, cool sorry. fun facts with kelly <laughs> hey don't steal my segment <laughs> <laughs> you've taken so much already <laughs> okay here are your three choices number one yeah. the music of justin bieber the music of number two nickelback or the music of number three britney spears Okay, in my mind, I would say Nickelback because every no one likes Nickelback, but I'm actually gonna say a Britney Spears. Final answer? Yeah. Lock in your answers at home. They're locked in. I'm wrong, aren't I? You're not. It is Britney Spears. Yeah. What would be your? What is that song? Toxic. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Okay, I hear it now. I was like, is that Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? What is that? I nailed that. Y'all tell me. I nailed it. You got a pretty strong Britney impression. Thank you. Can I hear it? No. <laughs> Give me like what what song would you torture pirates to? Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? I can't. <laughs> that something wasn't right. All right, that was pretty good. That was good. It was solid. I, had, had I was like, like I was, for those listening, you have to like hold the ear. You got to hold it. It was so it. good, I thought I, too, was stuck in a conservatorship battle. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh, man. That's not going any better. Shout out to Britney Spears. Hang in there. Leave Britney alone. And uh, I hope everything goes well with your amicable, hopefully amicable disillusion of marriage. Yeah, it was like, that's happening. Woo! Number two. <laughs> Most adults develop an allergic reaction to this food item. Those who don't actually have a DNA mutation. Okay. Which food item is it? Milk, peanuts, or shellfish? Milk. Final answer? Yeah, it's probably wrong. Locking it in at home? It's wrong. It's right. You're two for two. <laughs> yes! How many are there? There are four. Okay, so milk. So you're already at 50%. So what happened? What type of allergic reaction do people have? So here's the deal. It's more of an intolerance to dairy than just milk. Okay. But I couldn't give a bunch of categorical foods like yeah, yeah. fruits and yeah, yeah. dairy would be too obvious. So yeah, it's dairy. And I think I get that because I have like a, I've always had a little bit of a dairy intolerance, yeah. but I'm good with cheese. But if I eat like a whole big bowl of cereal, which is like one of my favorite things to do, I'll be like feeling kind of crappy after for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have that. So Maybe you, I will. I don't know. You might have a DNA mutation. I know. I'll take it. <laughs> On the final episode, we're going to try the Eggo brunch in no, a no, jar no, no, no. and a gallon of milk. <laughs> Kelly's just going to drink no. milk. No, no, no. All right. Two more. You ready? Yes. I don't Number. like the taste of milk particularly. Yeah, because it's gross. Yeah. With, with cookies, with cereal, but by itself, I'm like, hmm. As Arnold Schwarzenegger once said, milk is for babies. And as vegans say, not your mom, not your milk. Number three, <laughs> human DNA contains all the necessary genes to produce what? Scales, gills, or feathers? She's thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> all of them sound crazy. Scales, gills, or feathers? I'm going to say feathers. You're three for three, girl. Yes! In my, my head, I was like, we even make hair. We make like our nails. It feels similar. Yeah. I thought I might get you with scales. Yeah. Close. Some people have more scaly skin than others. That's true. But people with ichthyosis. Yeah. So what, what is it? It's feathers. Yeah. <laughs> is there like specific parts of our DNA that do that? Or is there a reason why we don't grow feathers then, even though we have all the necessary parts to make it? Or did you not? I think it's just uh, it. evolution and intelligent design and survival of the fittest. Got it, got it, got it. And I don't so have an answer. So you're saying not apes, I'm not just, gorillas. You're saying birds is where birds. we came from. We, remember when we all discovered <gasps> that dinosaurs, dinosaurs have had feathers? feathers instead of, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so we're like from we've been dinosaurs. Yes. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> That's kidding. what happened. It wasn't no. a meteor. We just evolved no, from no. dinosaurs. <laughs> Who knows? That's why we it's have false lies now. arms. <laughs> Yeah, so we good. hopefully one day we'll sprout feathers and maybe fly. That'd be crazy. You'll believe a man can fly. All right, I've got one more. Okay. Number four. Yep. A tree with darker leaves than the other trees around it can indicate what? One, it's stealing nutrients from the other plants around it. Two, the tree is almost 99% dead. Or three, there might be a body underneath it. <laughs> 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 I'm like, did you throw that one in there just to throw me off? Say them again for me and for those at home. A tree with darker leaves than the trees around it may indicate what? One, it's stealing nutrients from the plants around it. Two, the tree is almost 99% dead. Or three, there might be a body underneath it. I'll look at the trees around me. What is that going to do to help you? I don't know. I want to go with there's a body underneath it because I think it's interesting. Okay. But I don't think that's the right answer. But for funsies, there might be a body underneath it. Well, let's take a look back. You got number one right with Britney Spears torturing pirates. You've got number two right with people developing an allergy to milk. You got number three right with feathers in our DNA. But number four, you also got right. Oof, four oof, for oof, four. Oof, oof, oof. Yeah, I like this game. Dang, you killed it. Yes, so apparently there may be a body Underneath a tree that has darker, I almost Dang. said feathers. I, well, I had to assume. I was like, they say the greener, when you talk about vegetables, the greener it is, the more nutrients and stuff. Is that true? That it has, yeah. Oh, like broccoli like versus? Broccoli and spinach, stuff like that. The greener Got it. it is. So that In my to mind, you, I went like more nutrients. Like they from, don't really steal. Well, trees don't really steal from each other. They have like a good system that they share. I don't know if that's true, but in my mind, I go, you guys are sharing. Sharing is caring. Well, since we're just making things up, I'll throw some stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, there is allegedly a 
mycelium network below certain trees, particularly like in the Amazon, yeah. which are like the little fibers of yeah. mushrooms that help trees communicate and yeah. other plants communicate. And they can actually share resources and share water. If one tree is not getting enough, they can communicate through that mycelium network. I think that's what that. I was thinking of. And you didn't make that up. That's actually real. Well, it's real enough that we saw it on Netflix. That's true. Well, and I, I've heard that the mycelium network can be like, there's a body down there, but probably not. <laughs> that part's probably not true. That probably not true. Yeah. Wow. Those are my fun facts. That was fun. It was a good time. Uh, I didn't mean to steal your thunder with fun facts, but... Yeah, I still had my fun facts coming in. Okay, you you got some fun facts? I don't have any fun facts per se today. I'm just saying I had fun facts within your fun facts. So sorry for anything that I took from you. All good. What you got? We're doing another round of Would You Rather. Oh, great. Let's do it. Would you rather... I don't know. I don't like it. Is that the bumper? Let's try it. One, two, three. No, 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 no. I don't like it. I gotta think of something different. Would you rather... That was my Britney impression. (laughs) Oh, Yeah. Dang, girl. <laughs> she didn't even warm up. Mm. Okay. Would you rather? Yes. Let's go. And play at home. These are just simple, simple, simples. I'm very tired. So I did put stuff together. We're going to go through it. Let's do it. Would you rather? Yes. As a part DJ. That's just for the people at home. Have no Wi-Fi or no music? No Wi-Fi. Really? You mean like at a gig? No, no, no. I just mean oh, in, in life. life. Yeah. I was oh, like. Oh, no. I did music forever. <laughs> I would bury it under a tree somewhere oh, yeah? and let the, the leaves get greener. So I, funny. yes, I could live without music 100%. Fun fact could about, live without Wi Fi. Yeah, fun fact about, about SP. Yes, he, while well, he does work with music a lot, as like, you know, your host and a DJ and yep. you DJ and you have a lot of music and you know a lot of music, he does not like to listen to music at home. Nope. <laughs> it's Brooklyn and I that normally listen to music. It's true. And by music, she means Taylor Swift. And that's it. Not only Taylor Swift. It's just been Taylor Swift season because of eras to her. Um, every season is Taylor Swift season. I mean, that's Every true. era. Every yeah. time. I don't know what it is exactly. I listened to music today. It was really weird. I picked up our kids' stuff this morning without Kel so she could get a little sleep. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Good husband. <laughs> but uh, I listen to some music. I don't actually enjoy listening to music. I listen to podcasts and audiobooks almost strictly. Yep. And uh, yeah. It's kind of weird. Maybe it's because it's such a big part of my job that when I'm not doing it, I'm not really interested in being around it. I don't know. I also think that I have such, I'm getting better, but I have such a low emotional margin in general that if I'm listening to a song that is moody or sad, it impacts me in such a large way that it can put me in a funk, which has nothing to do with music, has everything to do with like where I'm at mentally and emotionally for the last 10 years. And uh, I don't know what it is, but yeah, I'm not a big music person. So I'd 100% go for Wi-Fi. Yeah, I would go for music, but I'd listen to music. I mean, I watch TV all the time too, but I think I could get like when I'm cooking dinner or whatever, but I think I could be okay with just music. Well, that's a weird thing too. You do watch a lot of television, not new television necessarily. You'll watch Makes Wednesday. Me sound like all I do is watch television. You do watch <laughs> a lot of TV. Uh, you watch more TV than you listen to music. Calling me out. Well, here's but here's the well, weird thing. Here's the deal. I used to drive a lot more. Yeah. Um, and so I used to listen to music on my drives, and now I drive like nowhere by myself. Right. So my alone time is like I'm gonna put a show on. Be can, careful with can your you neck. Can you hear that? Yeah. At home, listen. Oh my gosh. Anyway, that was my neck. Enjoy that, Craig. A, a girl like broke her neck from doing that. Like just so you know, so I'm you not gotta gonna be stop just because some. She did take her, her hands neck. and. Like, yeah. twist your neck. If that's how I go, that's how I go. Here, I'm not. She didn't to... die. She just broke her neck and then had to. Oh, sorry. Like, In my head, she okay. was dead, buried under a tree. No. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to throw you under the bus with the TV stuff, and I don't feel like I did. But what's interesting <laughs> is you watch more TV than you listen to music, for sure. Yeah. But you watch far more television than I do. That's true. And mostly the same stuff over and over again. It's like yeah. a comfort thing for me. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say is you would, like, when Wednesday comes out, you'll watch that whole thing. When the new season of Bridgerton comes mm-hmm. out, you'll watch it. But you'll rewatch a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just rewatched all of Friends. Yeah, now you're back I'm to currently Bones. currently in season six of Bones. Which has got to be, what, how many times do you think you've watched Bones? A ton of times. Yeah. Probably next in the rotation is Gilmore Girls, because Ashley May is watching it right now. Well... She started to shout out to Ashley May, and I was like, "Yeah, it's it's a fall show. You can watch some Gilmore Girls." Although sure. I did just watch that, I think the top of this year. <laughs> yeah, you don't. I watch, do watch you don't watch a lot of TV, do you? <laughs> over and over. Well, I like watch it when I get ready in the morning with my makeup on or doing my hair or any of that stuff. When I take a bath, I'll watch something. It's like a comfort thing for me. 
Yeah. It's my friend. Yeah, I pretty much, I think I find too much of my worth in doing things and accomplishing things. Yeah. And my, uh, like, achiever brain, and I don't mean achiever like I'm great. I mean, no. like, Enneagram I, 3 yeah. achiever. Three on the Enneagram, yep. My achiever brain says sitting down and watching a TV show isn't a good enough use of your time. Just so not true. Yeah, because no one's telling me that. Yeah. It's just my ego saying that. And by ego, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of clarifying. Ego, I don't mean the arrogant part. I just mean that part that's all that running narration in your head all yeah. the time is telling me like you have to be doing something else. Or at least if you're watching TV, you also need to be editing the podcast or doing a video or playing Sudoku or something. And I've always been like that. When I was a kid, even in high school, I would be playing, it might've been college, I'd be playing a video game, must've been college, playing a video game on the TV while having an episode of something on my laptop, while listening to like a podcast or music or something like Dang. that. Yeah, it was always something. And it, it stemmed from this like, this crazy thought that somehow that was productive, mm -hmm. that multitasking was productive, and then has just kind of become a core belief that I need to un, undo in my mind that it's not okay just to do one thing. I guess deep down, now that we've answered the question of music <laughs> or Wi-Fi, I guess deep down, like one of my core insecurities has always mm -hmm. been, am, am I good enough to whoever, to whatever the situation yeah. is? And I, I think that gets exacerbated when I don't feel like I'm doing enough because I tie my worth to the things that I do or produce. Yeah. So I would not listen to music. And I don't watch a lot of TV. And I do think that you certainly, I agree that you would pick music, of course. Yeah. And could, even if I didn't agree, it doesn't matter. It's your, your answer. My thing. Because I'd be happy with music and Legos. Oh, my gosh. And boy, oh, boy, was it a big week for Legos. He's got more in. I think you've built two more sets since the last episode. So there will be a link in the description for the <laughs> GoFundMe just to keep my head above water. Because Legos ain't cheap, baby. I do love Legos. And then we had our neighbor text us, and he was like, hey, there's been a package outside for a couple of days. You want me to grab it? And I was like, yeah, thanks. And I went and got it from him when you were getting your nails done yesterday. And it was this huge cardboard box that was no longer a rectangle. It had yeah. rounded on the edges yeah, because it was so stuffed with Legos. with Legos. Yeah, I need to open that up tonight and see what came in, and then I'll build them. And if you guys want to see it, let me know. Yeah, I think, honestly, we'll probably end up filming some of that stuff. I do love building Legos. So we shall see. All right, what other would you rather do you have? Would you rather confront someone face-to-face -face for being a bad friend or tell your hairdresser you don't like your haircut? <laughs> <laughs> what if my my hairdresser is my best friend and they're not though but yeah well this goes into another interesting thing about me is that i have very few friends and it's not necessarily like i keep my circles tight it's hard to find, make friends in your 30s it's well the... for me it's not even that like i have a lot of acquaintances yeah but i don't have a lot of friends oh they're gonna come at you all your friends <laughs> oh, yeah. here, I, but there's a difference between friends and people you're friendly with. Yeah. Yeah. We have, you know, we definitely have friends, but I think one of the interesting things about you and I is that I think there's good and bad to this. You and I are very, very happy together. You're my best friend. You're my best friend. But we're also codependent a bit, which we know. Yeah. And if push comes to shove, Given the choice of hanging out with each other or doing anything else, we often are just like, I'd kind of rather hang out, yeah. which is awesome for us because we're around each other the most. And so we love the person that we're with. So I wouldn't change that. But I have learned recently that there is some unhealth in the fact that I don't have a lot of friends yeah. and that I don't pursue a lot, a lot of friendships and relationships. And I think as I've gone through this season, we haven't talked about it on the show, but like, I, for instance, I got a clip uh, from a gig sent to me. Thanks, Dale, for sending it over. It was from May of this year. And there were basically it was a, a, a good clip, good enough that they were like, we got to send this to you so you can use it, which is awesome. But I watched it this morning and I was like, oh, I look tired. Like, I look not great. And we haven't talked about it on the show, but the first five to six months of this year were pure insanity in terms yeah. of work. You were gone 
all the more than you were home all the time and all, the time. all like almost all of these gigs i was doing was they were on the east coast or mm -hmm. they were in europe they were like really far away i was yeah. on planes all the time and i didn't realize it until i got some time away but being on so many flights was the reason why my body started to not shut down, but like I would have these incredible pains in my feet in my legs and my fingers and my hands. Yeah. And I, like, I, I lost some dexterity for a while. Like even trying to like do clasps on your necklace or Brooklyn's necklaces and stuff was really hard. And I think it was from flying so much from yeah. going up and down so much and then getting away from it. It was, you know, it got better. But anyway, I realized not only was the busyness of work a problem, but also, uh, I was dealing with a lot of anxiety, which is normal for me, but you were the only person that I had to bounce things off of. Yeah. And that's a lot of responsibility and weight to carry for you. To, I mean, for better or for worse. For sure. But also if I, if I had people that were closer with me, yeah, I could, you know, chat through some of that stuff too, rather than always like every time we get back together, I'm like, here's how I'm doing and feeling yeah. and here's what happened because our relationship should have a lot of fun elements too. And not just me being like, here's why I'm so anxious. Yeah. So, um, I don't think I, yeah, I don't have a ton of friends. I have a lot of people that I love. What was the, that between though? Friends or what? Having a, like a face to face with a friend or telling your hair dresser that you didn't like your haircut. Okay. So <laughs> back to the question at hand, I would rather have a face to face with a friend. Than tell your hairdresser. Yes. hundred percent. I could, I don't know that I could. I've actually, <laughs> okay. I shot a commercial this summer for uh, for a company, and I got a haircut like a couple days before. But there was this like weird piece kind of going this way. My <laughs> hair is so weird; it's always weird. And I was just dumb enough to be like, "This shoots tomorrow. I'll just take some scissors and cut it off." And I literally like cut an almost bald spot in in the side of my head. I don't even part. think you told me that. I remember no, I you coming home. Really, I would have yeah. helped you. <laughs> oh my gosh. So why wouldn't you, you'd rather tell a friend than tell your hairdresser? Yeah. Well, here's the weird thing. My hairdresser is actually my friend. I've known Casey. Shout out to Casey. For a long time. Um, number one, she always does an amazing job with my hair. So That's true. I like never have anything to complain about ever. But it, let's take Casey out of it and say just a hairdresser. It's the same way I feel about my nails. It's like, this is the person that you're going back to see. Yeah. Probably. Or if you don't like it, you're probably not going to go back to them. But it's a hard thing to complain about a service that's been done. Right. I agree. Totally agree with um, that. Because you're paying for a service. Hear me when I say, yeah, I think you should like it. It's the same thing if you bought a shirt. It should fit you. If it doesn't fit you, you're going to take it back and return it. The difference is, is you can't always exchange your nail design or your hair. Um, and there's only certain instances in which I would complain about my hair. Right. Say... They cut it too short or they dyed it the wrong color. Um, then yes, of course I'm going to do that. But the truth is I'm probably not going to go to that person. I'm probably going to go to somebody else Yeah. and be like, this person messed up my hair. <sighs> do you remember when Simone, Simone got her thinking hair thinking about, I was thinking about that, but let me just finish this before we get there. But I will say this, it is easy. If I'm going to have a heart to heart with a friend, it's probably someone that I'm close with that I feel comfortable enough with that I've had like, that we have the, the space and the freedom to be able to say, Hey, I'm, like you hurt my feelings. I'm having this conversation or like when you did this, that really yeah. like didn't make me feel good. And it's probably a safer environment where like, I actually want to work at that relationship where I don't always want to work at the relation relationship with like nails or hair. Although I do love my nail person and I do love my hair person. And so we've I'm talked about happy. this. We've talked about this a lot, but, uh, and we, this is just kind of the phrase Kelly and I use a lot too, is that we fall in love really quickly. Yeah. And by that, we really mean like a, a platonic, like in the space of love, not romantic, yeah. uh, as people probably assumed it yeah. wasn't that, but yeah, you fall in love with your people and your nail tech is that person for Sona, you. Sona, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like you'll spend two hours with her. You and got her, her about wedding life, yeah. gifts and, and she brought you gifts back from her wedding and stuff. Yeah. From Cambodia. Yeah. Yeah. So you fall in love really fast. I think yeah. it's easier to do that. All right, what's next? Yeah, well, oh. and I'll say this, to just to back up your point, because yeah. this is a fun piece of the wedding that we didn't share, fun, funny, weird, yeah. fun. Um, we saw these people like twice, because we had two events that we did during the weekend. And so by the time we got to the second event, you know, they're more comfortable with us and all that stuff. 
I got kissed on the cheek twice by not my husband. Yep. We had a guy <laughs> kissing Kells on the face. He was married. His wife was there. They were very friendly, very sweet and kind. Italians That's the clarification. from Europe. You're like, don't worry. He was married. <laughs> he kissed me on the cheek in front of his wife. It was a very like... Um, brotherly type of thing. I mean, I watched him kiss a, b- a ton of other people. Was it brotherly? On the cheek. Cause some people, they I don't know. D- like I do the fake kiss thing a lot that like, you know, you're like, no, no, no it was a full on side to side, but you like, Mwah. it was a full on like kiss on yeah, my cheek. That's not brotherly. Do you, do you, either of your actual brothers do that no, to you? But I do think it's a cultural thing because he is Italian and he's also from the UK. Like, it's not like he's here and he's like, I just do this. Like he, they are literally, not from here. Yeah, we were talking to... And his wife gave me a really big hug. They were so sweet. We were talking to, to Derek and Spanish. Haley about it. And he was like, oh, yeah, he kisses everybody. And he's like, did he kiss you? I was like, no, but I'm going to try to find him at the hotel and see if I can get one. <laughs> but uh, I know I'm joking about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't but care. It's just that, uh, that, I don't care that he kissed you oh, in the I know. face. I know I've been kissed by many, many old women at gigs. Uh, <laughs> I do know that. But I, I was just trying to, to say that to share, like, I think we fall in love with people easy because we kind of are just who we are all the time. And I think it makes it easy for people to also yeah, yeah. fall in love with us. Like whatever that looks like, not in like how you and I fell in love. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's fun. I think that's, I really like that part of us, but yeah, you got some face kisses. I'm dead. I was a little jealous that I didn't get any. <laughs> What's next? You got some from me. Um, we're doing good on time. I think we'll end up rather than splitting it up because I see you looking over yeah, there. Yeah, I'm looking. At um, I'm good on time. I think we okay. just let it be a long one. So enjoy. Okay, I'll do two more. Okay, great. All right, because I've still got unpopular opinions and stories. Yeah, I'm excited about unpopular unpopular opinions. Me okay, too. would you rather be a fantastic storyteller inspired by your embarrassing moments? Or never do anything embarrassing, but not have any funny stories. A hundred percent the first one. <laughs> do you have any embarrassing stories to share? I have so many. The one that comes to mind immediately uh-huh. is I was hosting a conference and it was a lot of people and I was leaving. Like we did a general session. We're talking like 15,000 people. We leave the general session. I stick around for rehearsals. So everyone's left the convention center and I'm walking out and I'm, I'm going to the escalator to go down. And this woman is like, hey, you look familiar. And that's always like a nice little ego boost. I'm like, oh, you know, it's probably from there. She's like, no, that's not it. Now I'm like, oh, who does she think? And I'm like, no, no, I, I, I'm on stage. I'm hosting the event. She's like, no, you look, I saw you in those Lord of the Rings movies. And I was like, okay, now I'm interested again. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And she, I'm like, is it Legolas? Like, who am I here? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you're one of those little hobbits. <laughs> And at this point, I'm on the escalator going down, and my ego's just like, (laughs) and so then I have to look up Hottest Hobbit just to figure out where I'm at in terms of the hotness. There are no hot hobbits. They are uh, big-footed, hairy-footed, little uh, mythical creatures. And uh, it ended up being a very unflattering experience, and then all of the ads that I got for the next year were about... Hobbits. Meeting up with sexy hot hobbit singles in my area. That's so, hysterical. Yeah. So I would much rather have embarrassing moments. I've fallen off stages. I've, oh, when Emily fell off the stage at Oof. Good Mythical Evening, yeah, yeah. that was amazing and going to be a great story for her. <laughs> I don't love embarrassing moments happening, but I love a good story. That's so good. 100%. What about you? Probably that one. I have enough embarrassing stories. My problem is I can never remember them. Yeah. And I don't have like a go-to embarrassing story that I tell, but I know I have a lot of them. I think it's more fun yeah. to live life that way. Yeah. If you live it too safe. Yeah, yeah. Just got to be you. Yeah. And also, if you have an embarrassing moment, take the power back and make it a fun story. Write it down in your phone and you'll have a good party story to bring up later. Like yeah. it's embarrassing in the moment, but almost always, as long as someone didn't get, you know, tragically hurt or injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good story for later. So write it down and take the power back. There you go. You got one more? Is that it? One more. Would you rather Mm -hmm. have to dance with a partner for 24 hours straight or sing with a partner for 24 hours straight? Oh, boy. Both of those sound awful. I mean, dancing, physical exertion, I couldn't do it. Uh But singing for 24 hours? If I Could I sing talk? 
we're singing still. This is singing, talking, sure. talking. I might have to go with that because I don't think my body could hold out for dancing for 24 hours. Oh, yeah. What about you? Um, I'd probably choose the dancing. What? Yeah, I, think, I don't think I could last 24 hours singing. But let me tell you the reason okay. why I asked. Oh, Fun no. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you know that during the Great Depression, this was a thing. They would have mm-hmm. dance marathons. So during the Great Depression, um, you had like the really rich and then everyone else who couldn't like really afford to live. Yeah, so like, like 20, slowly dying. 2023, yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, they would have dance marathons where they would say, come and entertain the rich um, and dance. And in return, we'll provide you food and shelter. Oh, that's So basically sad. to like live. That's like the equivalent of like having homeless people fight. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And what, what they would do is you would just, you didn't, you would find a partner. It didn't have to be someone that you knew. You just ha- have, you just could show up and find a partner uh-huh. and you would dance. Um, they'd let you dance for like, you would dance for 45 minutes. They'd give you like a 15 minute break and then you'd come back and <laughs> dance. Nice you'd, you'd keep going, but it was a dance marathon to, to do that. And this, <laughs> this could last like weeks where people would just keep dancing for entertainment so it was tiktok before tiktok yeah it was come in and watch these, these people dance these suckers dance that yeah. sounds absolutely insane yeah, people died on the dance floor people got married on the dance floor there was lots of crazy stuff that happened isn't that crazy that's nuts mm-hmm. and the longest one i was i was and this could be completely wrong the internet who knows who knows but the longest one that i that i was able to find was a couple that danced for like five months straight so much so that they how do they not sleep well, they would. The, the only rule was is that your your knees couldn't touch the floor. That was the rule. So, like, <laughs> you really looked into this. <laughs> your knees couldn't touch the floor. So, so like, you could like if you and I were dancing, uh-huh. I could fall asleep and you could hold me up while I'm sleeping on your shoulder. How poor and were then these we people could switch that they had to dance for five months for food and shelter. It's straight, or they're like we come in every day. No, 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 straight. I'm gonna and look. then they. They, um, at some point in time, they would like lessen the time that you had for breaks. Like they would give them like five minutes or three minutes instead of the 15. Cause the point they were just done with it and they wanted to end it. This brings up another great point is that I'm not built to last or survive in any other time era. When people are like, yeah. where would you like to go back in time? I'm like, nowhere. Dinosaurs get eaten right away. I <laughs> don't think can't. I could do life without air conditioning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not in 108 degree weather. Am I right? Oh my gosh. All right, you ready for some unpopular opinions? Thanks for joining me for my Would You Rather. Would you rather? <sighs> so, um, I'm I ready. D- unpopular opinions. I know you posted about them this week, and I never look at them. Nope. So I wait all week long to figure out what in the world. I'm laughing at. Yeah. Or what did people say? So I posted uh, 10 or 11 this week. And thank you to everyone who voted. We had just about 100 votes on each of these, which is awesome. Uh, I'm going to go through real quick the ones that we didn't have in here because they were were large discrepancies rather than pretty even in terms of agree or disagree. Okay. So here's those lightning fast. (laughs) We're never lightning fast. I know. I'm going to try. This was weird for me because I guess it's my unpopular opinion. (laughs) I agree with it, but I am in the minority. (laughs) Okay. Let's see if I agree with it. It is women changing their last names to their husbands is a weird tradition. Uh, I think it's weird, but I also did did change my name. Yeah, so. but I wasn't like you better. No, yeah, I think I think we're coming to a place now where girls can make the decision. Sometimes yeah. they hyphenate; it's totally fine. I just wanted to be a McGillicuddy. And th- that's McGillicuddy the thing, is a what? A McGillicuddy. Oh, it's very Irish. Kind of. I know. I don't. I mean, know the name is. I don't know what the accent was though. <laughs> I don't know. So here's my thing is like you and I talk about this a lot is that it's important to me that you don't feel like a possession or property. Yeah. I even like I'll, I'll introduce you occasionally as my wife, but I'm much more comfortable calling you my partner because that's like how we do life yeah. together mm-hmm. is that I don't see see you as like something like she's mine now and yeah. I possess her like we do life together. Yep. And I think that's for me. I'm like, why? Why would you have to take the last name of a person? I understand historically, but I don't think anymore. Well, I'm in the minority. 69% disagreed and 31% agreed. So I was in the minority there. Yeah, it's okay. Next one. This was one of my favorites. Rachel from Friends is a pretty awful person who just got away with things because she was pretty. Yeah, yeah. 74% agreed with that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty true. I think in the later season, she becomes a pretty good person. Yeah. uh, Because she's grown and all that stuff. And that's the point. But yeah, I would say I would venture to say that Phoebe is the best person on that show. She is the weirdest and the best, huh? Yeah. And a groundling. 
Shout out to Groundlings. Yeah. Next one, couples. Well, these I'm going fast because these are the fast ones, right? Yeah, these are the fast ones. Couples should share their locations with each other. Yeah. I agree with that. But also, like, I don't care what other people do. Yeah, we do. What I would say is that if one of the cup pe- parts of the couple are, are giving a hard time about that. Red flag. Yeah. It's like you probably can't trust them. It did. I want to know where you are. I want to know when you're coming home at nighttime. I'm not always looking at your location all the time, but sometimes when I miss you, when you're on the road, I'm like, I wonder if he's done with the gig yet. Yeah. I want to be this morning. I was like, I, you let me sleep in so that I could sleep. Cause I was so tired. And I was like, I wonder how close he is to home. You were parked in the parking spot. And I was like, last night, I, no, this morning I was like, oh. I should start getting out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's but where if I get someone, my me time is in, in the parking spot. Yeah. If someone is having a, if someone doesn't want to share, it's a red flag. Yeah. It's I not that big of a deal. Yeah. You already share everything else, money, home, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Toilets. I won't dive into it because I just totally agree. And 78% agreed as well. What did you say that I missed? <laughs> I said money home. Toilets. Toilets. That's true. Was it worth banging your face on the mic for? No, that's number four. Number four, baby. Yeah, so 78% agree that couples should share their locations. 22% disagreed. Next one, people who put their phones Red up. Red flag for those 22%. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to see who you were. Next one, people who put their phones up during a concert will never, ever watch that video, and they ruin the experience for everyone else. 100%. So is that why you made me do it at the Aero Store? Yeah, I have watched the videos that you put back up, 100%. Yeah. Good. Um, but yeah, I... I I, the older I get, oh God, I'm so old. The older I get, I go, we should really live in the moment. I like to take pictures to remember things and some videos for some things, but you're never going to watch it again, guys. All of you that recorded Taylor Swift and all the stuff, it was for TikTok. We all know. Yeah, it's for TikTok. You're cloud. never going to watch it again. I have a bigger problem with people recording fireworks, but that's for another day. No yeah. one watches fireworks. Next, and um, Danielle hit me up. I just want to say I'm not talking about your cats. Your cats are great. <laughs> This next one is letting cats sleep in your bed is disgusting. No. Letting them walk on counters and tables where you eat is even worse. No. Well, I see why. I understand why, guys. Who are you I, yelling at? You. I don't know. I am a cat person and my cat slept in my bed with me and she had her own pillow. I know. Weird. I was only one person. I had a full bed. She slept under the covers, on the pillow. We snugged and my other cat would sleep on like next to my feet. I loved it, but I'm a snuggler. I will lay on the floor with Scooter and snuggle with Scooter. It's because Scooter's a dog. Yeah, Look, but cats are cleaner than dogs, for the record. All animals are kind of dirty. Yeah, but cats Listen, are cleaner. I'm not a cat person. I'm not, not anti-cat. He's allergic. I'm allergic. That's really what it is, yeah, yeah. Danielle, just so you know. But do you think people agreed that it's disgusting, or do you think that they disagreed? I think it's just, ugh, well, you, these are the fast ones. I think people probably disagreed with, or like said it was disgusting. I understand why. I'm just a cat. I just like animals. Yeah, so 73% agreed that it's disgusting. I, 73, I almost just, almost three quarters. I just need to know, that I need everyone to know that I, I understand. <laughs> but you disagree. At least the sleeping in the bed part. I'm like, come, come snuggle with me. Okay, a couple few more quick, quick I, hits. I know, but I would say that your your child is probably dirtier than your cat. I'm just saying it. No way. When they run around on a playground with their dirty feet. I remember there's a They study. don't want to bathe or That's shower true. ever. You have to force them. At least our kid. Yeah, yeah she never wants it. <laughs> Um, anyway. I remember there's a study, this was years ago, they're like, did you know your purse and your cell phone is dirtier than a public toilet? Yeah, it's and probably I was dirtier like, than your cat. Sense. Yeah, probably. Just saying, you put that up to your face. Yeah, cats like weird, gross places, though, so I don't know. Let's move on. Next, <laughs> no one's, quote, not caring that aliens are real. They just don't believe it's true. 79% agreed with that, which means most people don't think there's enough evidence to sustain the recent claims that aliens are real. Aliens are real. We cannot live in this universe and we can't you can't expect that we're the only people in the entire universe. That would be guys. Nuts. That'd be absolutely insane. And have you been or seen the ocean lately? There's a lot of weird creatures down there. Yeah. I'm just saying. So 79% agreed, 21% disagreed. So am I disagreeing? You are agreeing that it's not that people don't care that aliens are real. It's that we don't have enough evidence. So I don't know if you're agreeing or disagreeing. I agree that there's not enough evidence for what they're talking about right yeah, now. A little piece of metal that they provided. Well, they said like a, it's a biological tissue or something that's not Whatever. human. But that means, you know what else is biological tissue that's not human? Shark. Cat flesh. Yeah. <laughs> That's on your countertops. Hermit crabs. <laughs> All and right. This one, was, this one was interesting to me, um, and it almost made it because it was 61% that agreed and 39 that disagreed. Okay. The world would be a happier place without the internet. 
Yes. I think the key word here is happier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would it be better? I don't know. Would it yeah. be more convenient? No. Would it be happier? Yeah. I'm happier the more time I'm away from the internet. Yeah, yeah. There are people, people just have more access to things that aren't true. And we talked about this last week, and I'll just quickly hit on, hit on it, this idea of like hustle culture yeah. and fake it till you make it. It becomes a problem when that's combined with the internet. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it is, is you can... Like fake it till you make it in hustle culture, not a bad thing in like work and business, even in, in normal life. But when you mix that and give them a platform on like TikTok or YouTube for people to start spewing things that I'm just faking it till I make it. I am a like a scientist or yeah. like I'm on my way to be that or whatever it is. And they start spew or I'm a political I'm a therapist. Expert. Yeah, or a yeah. therapist. Like that's when I think the real hurt comes. And yeah. I do think we'd be happier if we didn't have access to things. If things traveled more slowly there's definitely a lot of misinformation out there 100 percent. our podcast being one of them probably <laughs> sometimes not we always. don't fact check this yeah we do Sounds i up. don't fact check this but yes i agree that in general i think it'd be happier but yeah can't go back no which is my fear with ai i hope we regulate that a little bit for some yeah, yeah. things because once you open the box it is open just can't stop just can't stop all right last quick hit i think and then we'll go to the real ones okay uh, this one was pretty close. Almost made it in. 65% agree and 35% disagree. Warm or hot milk is absolutely disgusting. If you put chocolate in it, it's not bad. Well, now it's hot chocolate. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. I'm talking milk milk. No, we I already had this conversation about milk earlier. Yeah, I mean. So we can get through it. I don't want it. No. Unless you put some hot cocoa in it. And then you're here for it because you're a chocolatey lady. Yes. All right. So let's get to the actual okay, closest ones, starting with the top two closest ones at 52% agreeing and 48% disagreeing. A true back and Whoa. forth unpopular opinion. Sparkling water, regardless of the flavor, is disgusting. <laughs> We're already at ends on this as you take a sip of your Topo Chico. Um, I... I prefer flat water to sparkling water. I don't think that sparkling water is gross. I just prefer flat water. Okay. I obviously love sparkling water, mm -hmm. but I wasn't always this way. Mm -hmm. I used to really, really dislike it. Um, it was very confusing when we were in Europe and stuff, and you'd get sparkling water rather than normal water. And I agree that it is not nearly as refreshing as normal water. Mm -hmm. There's times when you're hot or been running around, you need flat water. Yeah. And not even cold, cold water, because you want to be able to drink it fast. You want to yeah. be hydrated, baby. But I really like sparkling water. We have a soda stream, not a yeah. sponsor. Topo Chico's in almost every episode. Just to make sparkling episode. water. Yeah. It's well, not even getting, make soda, yeah. It was, oh, no, we don't make soda with it. Uh -huh. It's literally just sparkling water because it was getting so expensive having Topo Chico's or Pellegrino's or whatever that it made more sense to have yeah. a, a soda stream. I don't know what that sound is. I don't know if it'll come through the podcast, but mm. if the podcast the ends AC. with a big explosion, <laughs> just yeah. know that we didn't. We're make just it. trying to stay cold, everybody. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good though. Like, I don't like flavored uh, sparkling water very much. It always has. It's never quite right. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a nice treat. I would say that it's in the same way that you couldn't just drink soda all the time. Like, yeah. I don't feel like I can drink sparkling water all the time because I don't always want the bubbly. I almost always do. So if you're looking for something to get me. Anyone listening? Topo Chico. Topo Chico is the way to go. Yeah. I'm like a, give me a sweet tea. Yeah. Good sweet tea. Yeah. I also found that it's just a good, al like for me, it's been a good alternative yeah. to soda or it's to great. cocktails. Like sometimes you want something that's more, a little, just slightly more fun than water. Yeah. And for me, that's sparkling water. That's so I love it. So that was one of the closest, but still tied the second one at 52% or 50, yeah, 52% agreed, 48% disagreed. Okay. Was this next one. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit tricky. Telling someone they need to be happy being alone before getting into a relationship is terrible advice. I'm not sure where I stand on this. Um, I think the sentiment is true. It is like, okay, I think someone being happy with who they are and in their own skin prior to getting into a long-term relationship I think is good. However, I think by the time someone is telling you that, <laughs> it's because the person telling you that is looking for like an easy fix or an easy answer to stuff. When they're when the person's like, you need to work on yourself. Yeah. 
So I don't know how that fits into your unpopular opinion, but that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, I, I, I do think it's really important that before you get into a relationship, you're confident in who you are and you're sure. happy with who you are and like, you know who you are and you're going to continue to grow and change and you want to be at a healthy place or at least have awareness of who you are when you get into a relationship. Therapy really helps with that. Yeah, that's true. Positive therapy person. Be in th- I was in therapy, went back to therapy. I think it's great. Um, I don't think that anyone should tell anyone that though. It's a weird thing. Yeah, it's tricky. I mean, I'm also a believer in offering opinions and advice when it's asked. I don't always do a great job with that, but usually I'll say like, I know you didn't ask this. This is unsolicited. Here yeah. it is. Or would you mind if I said something? So, uh, I don't know that I'd be the person who's going to tell people like you need to work on yourself. I do think that the list of qualities that you expect in a partner should be something that maybe you're trying to develop yourself because that yeah. will make you, you know, uh, not just more appealing to a partner, but also just a more well-rounded person yeah. rather than looking for someone who's going to fill in the gaps that, maybe you lack working on some of those, I think can be beneficial. Yeah. I also think I see that you're holding it. I also think that, um, this has been a big journey for me from since 2020 was realizing that if I can't be alone in a room with my, just by myself with no TV, no phone, if I can't be confident and comfortable there, then I have a problem because if I'm not comfortable by myself, then I'm dependent on other people or other things in order to give me that, not just happiness, but peace. Yeah. That that I think is, is an issue just as a person It's separate from being in a relationship with somebody. What are you holding on to? I think all that stuff is true. And I think it is important that you like who you are. What I want to say though, because I was thinking about this as we, as I hand it off is I, I think that we are in 2023 and I do believe that times are a change in, um, And I think we put too much pressure on young people to be in a relationship and to find someone. So I was kind of triggered when you read the unpopular opinion because I was like, boy, was I told that prior to like being in a relationship. Part of the culture we grew up in. Wait, a relationship with me? Yeah. I mean, oh, not because it was me. Yeah. yeah, But prior to like finding you and like getting married, like that was something that I feel like was told to me. And I particularly feel like it's told to girls more than it's told to boys. I don't really feel like there's a, this pressure for a guy to get married. They can be single for a really long time and no one's going to say anything, but for girls, it's always like, don't worry, you'll find somebody like, just keep working on yourself. And like, it'll happen when it happens. And when you start, when you start to focus on you is when, God will send the right man to find you in your life and you won't even like, it'll just happen. That was something that was said a lot. Yeah. I even think I told people that because it was just so ingrained. Do you believe that now? No. You know what else? And I apologize. I can't give credit for who it was, but someone was on uh, probably TikTok and they were talking about certain phrases in Mandarin and Chinese. And they mm-hmm. were talking, I can't tell you the phrases obviously, but they said like when there's a single uh, man in their mid thirties, they're it's this word, and it means like a, a diamond in the rough. When a, whim, a woman is like that, it's this word, which means something like the last apple at the bottom of the basket. Yeah, something like that. And yeah. It's, yeah, it's totally like unfair, you know, oh, yeah. sexism. And you don't need a person to be complete or to be happy. Yeah. Like if you're gonna work on yourself, the I mean, we're all going through life by ourselves. Sometimes we have people that we get to walk the path with. Yeah. Sometimes you think you'll be with those people forever, and sometimes that's not the case. Yeah. But the truth is, like, you're doing this alone. Yeah, and and yes, and I think it's important to for each person to understand, like, what's of value to them and not what's of value to the culture that's around them, but what's of value to them. Yeah. We talk about this, and I don't think we've talked about it on the podcast, but, like, I distinctly remember when I turned 25. It's, like, a big milestone for me. Yeah. And like growing up, I'd been like, oh, by the time I'm 25, I'll like be married. I'll have a family. I'll be all these places. And I distinctly remember my parents took me to San Francisco with my best friend's mom. um, And I like broke down. And I remember my, I'm pretty sure my parents were not really happy with me. They're like, we took you on vacation. We're here. (laughs) I was just having such a hard time because I had hit this big milestone and I wasn't where I felt like I should be because that's where society told me to be. Right. What I couldn't see and what I was then able to see later was like I had a great career mm-hmm. where I was uh, making more money than I had ever had. But like I'd worked myself up in a company and was like a director. Yeah. 
um, of a company and eventually like went to oversee like multiple restaurants within that company. Um, I had some like really great relationships and friends. I had moved out and was like living with great roommates at the time. Um, I'd bought like a, my own car, like weird things that like, aren't that big of a deal. But for me, like at the time I couldn't see that, like I was like, like, uh, professionally I was like doing really well. I'd traveled for work at that point, like been to the corporate office, been around, like I'd done a lot of stuff. I had traveled to a lot of places, but I couldn't like celebrate those things and those pieces of me that had grown because I was so fixed on the fact that like I wasn't married and I didn't have a husband. I didn't have any kids right. because society puts so much pressure on that. So screw this unpopular opinion. Not really, but, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like I, I, yeah. I, I think it's true that you should be in love with who you are, but I also think that there's more to life than being in a relationship. I think that relationships are important, but I don't think they all need to be, um, like romantic relationships. Yeah. I think having like good friendships or even good professional relationships can be just as important or fulfilling yeah. as like a intimate one or, yeah. and I, I don't, I don't think that everyone is built for that either. And yeah. So the fact that we put so much weight on like, well, when you get married is when like you've made it. I think that kind of sucks. And specifically for girls. Yeah. And also there's plenty of people who have gotten married and it has been the opposite yeah. of helpful. Uh, like I had been married before mm -hmm. and obviously I'm married to you now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's not necessarily the answer to the, the loneliness problem or, yeah. or whatever it is. And I've heard it said a lot. And I think it's true is the reality of your life experience has a lot to do with what's going on in your head and in your heart, mm -hmm. even more than for most people, external things. If you're lucky enough to have a place that you live, have a car to drive around, have money for food and even for fun things, you're doing better than a significant amount of people who would love to have the, that. Yeah. But if, if you're focused on what you don't have, then your whole world's going to feel like it's not complete or it's not whole or it's not good enough. Yeah. If you can change your mindset, you can really change your life. Yeah. That's my motivational accidental speech for right now. You can change your mindset. You can change your life. Set. If you can change your mind, you can change your life. It just didn't work with the set there. I don't know. It I just think it didn't work. It was a good first draft. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. workshop it. Yeah, yeah. Look, I've got one more unpopular okay. opinion that I want to burn through real fast because we've got a little... We, we got to wrap it up soon. We yeah. got parent responsibilities yeah. and I want to make sure we hit some stories. Okay. So uh, real fast, the ne the third closest one was 44% disagree, 56% agree. Okay. So still really close, <laughs> but it is kind of ridiculous. It's that celery is nasty and without any redeeming qualities. Agreed. Uh, you burn calories while eating celery. So I would say that that's a great quality. No, it's not. Yes. You don't burn calories while eating. Yes, celery. you do. That's like saying you water. burn. Okay. You burn calories by eating anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because celery, the, the motion but of celery, chewing. you don't take in very much calories. So you burn more calories eating it than you do taking it in. I think that's a great quality. Okay. So the same thing with my Topo Chico. I like celery, so you're not going to win this gross. battle with me. I know, and we won't spend too much time, yeah. but I wanted to make sure we threw it in there because it was great. pretty fast. So let me give you a but couple. But I understand. It's, I understand people don't like it. I get it. I get it. But I like it. Sorry. It's not good, and it's bland. It's not. It's it's like a cucumber. It's gross. I like it cucumbers, has too. The hint of flavor, that's not very pleasant. Ants on a log, get out of here with that trash. Don't don't even because I've known you for fifty years and you've things. never done it. You've no, never had ants on a log. Listen, because we don't keep raisins in the house because you know raisins, what else we don't keep in the house? Celery. I get celery and carrots. You know who likes them? Our Not daughter. my daughter. Yes, one hundred percent. The other day she was like, "Mom, can I have carrots?" Carrots is different. I guarantee and you, celery. if you open our fridge right now, there There's will no not be a stock of celery. There's in no there. celery in it right now. Not a single we just stock. Went, we just got back from a trip. Yeah, there's all like of our nothing. celery went bad before no, there's the like trip. like nothing in our fridge is what I'm saying. I got I to gotta order some groceries is what I got to do. That's what we got to do. But look, celery is garbage. I Put like it in celery. the list with chocolate chip cookies. You weirdo. That's a shout out to like the first episode. I know. <laughs> All right. All right, so give me your story. We got some stories. This first one is uh, its not as much a story as it was a cool thing. It was a story, but there's not too much to talk about. Okay. But I still wanted to mention it because I thought it was pretty cool and unique. It is, do to do to do spotless arrival. Rare giraffe without coat <gasps> pattern is born at Tennessee Zoo. Wow. Did you see it? No, but I've heard of this happening before. Why is it an albino? 
No, it's is not. Is that inappropriate? So is it appropriate? For me to say albino. Oh, it's like a horse, know. like a weird it does, horse. Like a long necked horse. Do they know why it didn't have spots? Um, it's just a genetic defect. Hmm. Uh, apparently, there's only been like three of them in recorded history. Wow. The last one, I believe, was in the 1970s. Uh, the spots are supposed to help them camouflage in nature. Yeah, they don't need to camouflage in the zoo. Yeah, so maybe it's good. I know zoos are controversial things. Some yeah, people yeah, love yeah. them. Some people really hate them. Yeah. But maybe for this specific giraffe, who would be a little less... Safe? Have less defense there. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's good. So I did want to share that a cute, cute giraffe Dang. exists now. Oh, it looks All like right. a big, like a weird horse with a long neck and long legs. It does look or weird. Short body, I guess. Long yeah. legs are probably the same height. That's a, a perfect word picture. Picture. It's a good word picture <laughs> for those just wa- uh, listening, not watching. It's cute. All right, so let's get to the real stories here with the remaining time that we <laughs> that have. That wasn't a real story. It was not. We got just a couple minutes. This is one of my favorites, though. Here's the title: Airborne fish. Sparks New Jersey's power outage, electricity company says. So there was an incident involving a bird that gave new meaning to the term fish fry after an electric company suspected a bird of dropping its meal onto power lines, triggering a major power outage in a New Jersey neighborhood. Wow. Birds are really attacking humans these days. I know. We're getting a lot of bird dropping news. A Jersey Central Power and Light Company spokesperson said, this is my favorite part because they... They just don't take it seriously at all. Yeah. It's so good. So a spokesperson said, animal contact with is a common cause of power outages. However, fish are not on the no, list of no, no, frequent yeah. offenders. The incident caused 2,100 people to be without power for almost two hours. Dang. The Searville, I believe that's how it's said, police department poked fun at the incident on Facebook, naming the deceased fish Gilligan and pointing a finger at an osprey as the suspect, which was last seen flying south. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a movie. Then they say, please let us not forget the victim in this senseless death. The fish, that Aww, is. They're Gilligan. talking about the police department said, Gilligan was a hardworking family fish. He was a father to thousands of children. They did not write this. And I promise you they did. Oh, my gosh. And they finished the article by saying anyone with information on the case was asked to contact Detective John Silver, who handles all of our fish cases. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out John to the Silver. police department out there in New Jersey for having a good time. Oh, my gosh. That's hysterical. All right. I think I got time for just one more. All right, give so it let to me, me throw it in. This last story, the title is 51-year-old man facing charges after driving Power Wheels Jeep under the influence. So, I... Indi- <laughs> Do you have thoughts before I even jump in? How did he fit? I don't I know. I tried to sit in one of those because Brooklyn had them for a long time. I'm too big. Yeah, so if you don't know what Power Wheels are, if you've just forgotten, it's those... Uh, they're cars that kids can sit in. They're yeah, they're big, made for kids. Yeah, they're not big cars, but they're big toy cars. So yeah, you yeah. sit in them, they're electric, and yeah. you press, they only has a gas and a steering wheel. Some of them have radios. I mean, some of them are radios, yeah. So smaller than a real car, but cool. big car. You can fit like two toddlers in, in one of well, those. Well, it depends. Sometimes you have like the ones you can sit for, two in the front, two in the back. Yeah, it, it, so either two, four, or one 50-year-old man. I guess. Okay, so it says, an Indiana man was arrested after allegedly driving a Power Wheels Jeep while impaired on Wednesday night. Oh my 51-year-old John McKee driving a Power Wheels Jeep in the road. Authorities said they pulled the vehicle over because they had no lights or reflectors and it was hard to see. Oh my gosh. I wish I was there just for like the was sirens he driving- going off. On in the, the street. streets? He was in the street. Oh, my gosh. The Power Wheels Jeep was eventually stopped on 2nd Street in a low-speed pursuit. I made that part up, but yeah. come on. It but it be had slow. to be because they, they don't they lose battery real fast. Oh, yeah. Uh, police said McKee displayed signs of impairment and failed the field sobriety test after further investigation at Good Samaritan Hospital. That's right. They took him to the hospital. Officials discovered that McKee was under the influence of methamphetamines and marijuana. McKee was charged with op. Listen, charged. I was going to say, did he get a DUI? He was charged with operating a vehicle while intoxicated with a prior conviction. Let me let me just say this: What damage could he do in that little tiny plastic car? <laughs> I just need to know if he was in the street. He could get he killed. He could get killed. Yeah, which is still bad. Okay. But so this guy, not only was he charged, but currently, at the time of this article, which I believe was written on Wednesday, was arrested and is currently booked at the Knox County Jail. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? They're like, what are you in for? He's like, you know, big, big wheel. <laughs> <laughs> power oh power wheels Jeep. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my favorite part, though, is he already had... 
uh, a prior conviction. I know. It would be hilarious if it was the same conviction. <laughs> no, it'd have to be something different, but something just as They're ridiculous. Like, Is that John? Is that the, the Power Wheels the guy? The Power Wheels guy back here? Back again. He's like, skirt, skirt. Yeah. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. It's good times. We got a couple more stories, but we might have to push them Let's until next them. week, including a story I was excited about, which was the Australian town where people live underground. Well, tell me about it next week, huh? It'll be a little tease, and I guarantee. I will forget and not talk about it next week. Well, what are you looking forward to this week, babe? This week, honestly, it's been hard to see past all the stuff I know, we've all had. This, event, this weekend. Um, looking forward to getting our kid back. We get her yeah. today, so that'll be a fun ooh, week. Ooh. Um, that's about as far as I can think right now. What about you? Um, we have a couple hangs that are happening this weekend. I'm hanging with a friend Lindsay tonight, which I'm super stoked about. That'll be fun. Um, we have a couple. We're celebrating a birthday this weekend. Um, we are. Yeah, I don't know if it's a surprise for this person or if they know. Hopefully so I'm they're just not, not going to say the name. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. Um, I think they were invited to this, so I think that they know. Okay, well, but we'll see. Simon, we're we'll going with Simon. So be great. I promise I'll shout surprise regardless, and then we can surprise! find out. Surprise! Um, so we're doing that, and then we're also hanging with some friends we haven't seen in a while, our friends Sam and Jules, which I'm stoked about. What's cool Sunday. is everyone gets to realize that you are totally in charge of our calendar because mm. I had no idea we have like four obligations yeah, and responsibilities. It, it is a weird thing. I cannot believe that we're at the end of August. Oh, I literally man. today was like, is it 828? Is that where we're at right now? Not time, but dates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for those things. We have a lot coming up in September. We have a photo shoot that we're doing with our friend Jilly. For my company. Shout out Jilly Tarts. Um, she's amazing. Her tarts are delicious. If you haven't had them, they're great. She's in the Orange County area, right? Orange County? Yeah, Orange County. And um, they, I can vouch for her 100%. They're first so hand. good. They're freaking awesome. And she's amazing. She's so, amazing too. Well, we're doing some stuff with her. We're heading to Orlando with our favorite production team. Yeah. DB Productions. We love them so much. Um, with Craig, because Braden's going to be out here. But um, we're excited to see them in B2 events. Um, out in, in Orlando, and we get to see our friends Andy and Hannah. Hanging Hanners. with the girls. With the girls. Yeah, we're going to Disney World, so we'll be doing some fun things from there, which I'm excited about. I'm excited to kind of get away and go on vacation. I've been to Disney World. However, we did run into someone this weekend who's from Florida who told us, mm -hmm, this is a terrible month to travel. And I was like, thank you. We are going very, to be very hot. dying of heat. Yeah, well, I got one of those fan things for my neck that you refuse to wear, so yeah. Andy and I are going to be great. We both got one. It's not that I don't want to wear it. It's just that I'm not a huge nerd. I don't care. I'll be a nerd if it means that I'll be cooler. No, I'm going to be cooler while you're cooler. <laughs> that I will look cooler and you will feel cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay yeah. with that. I'd rather feel cooler than look cooler. Okay, deal. I'd rather the opposite. So, and truth be told, I won't look cool either. I'll just look like a guy in some Fabletics. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be in my Fabletics too. It'll be great. It's going to be good times. Not a sponsor. Yeah. Not a sponsor, but... We're open to but it. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yep. Do you have something else you want to add before we sign off? Because um, I'm excited also that no. Brooklyn and I started our own podcast. Yeah, yeah. She's been wanting to do that. I'm, I think we talked about it briefly. We uh, are not sharing it uh, publicly, but we have shared it with our families. And it's really cool because she's yeah. honestly, she's good at it. She's a cute, cool she's kid. She's got the gene. I love it. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. We might do another episode tomorrow, but we shall see. Yeah. Is that and it I'm for excited you? about my Legos. I'm gonna post some pictures on my Instagram. I promise everybody. I'll yeah, we'll post them there. We'll cut some clips together. But we'll do a lot of stuff. That's just me. And, that's it. And uh, yeah, we love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging. And yeah, nothing like the show coming to a very weird ending. I know. <laughs> hey, we'll thank see you. you next week. We will. Thank you guys so much for watching, for listening, for liking, commenting, subscribing. And if you're looking for ways to support the podcast, the best way you can do that is by sharing it with your friends. Tell yeah. them about it. It's been fun to see all the growth. We can actually see growth on yep. the YouTube channel. It was great to have over 10,000 views, Thanks. 150 uh, watch hours within the last 28 days, which is awesome. So thank you for doing that. Please keep that up. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, compliments, unpopular opinions, yeah. stories, whatever you'd like to send in, send them in to hard, hardly working fans. That's plural. Hardly working fans at gmail.com. And we'll maybe sh share it on the show. That's it. We love you guys. Thanks for listening and watching. And I love you. I love you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Gotta go bite.